Hello, sixth graders. This is Mr. Shear, and today we're doing chapter one, lesson six, and it's on equivalent ratios. I keep telling you guys this, but there's 12 chapters in the book. We've done five lessons. Factors and multiples was lesson one. Lesson two was ratios. Lesson three was rates and unit rates. Lesson four is ratio tables. And lesson five, last week we just graphed ratio tables. So now we're doing the sixth lesson. We're going to spend two days on equivalent ratios today and tomorrow. Thursday we're going to do the last lesson in this chapter. On Friday we're going to review for our test because next Tuesday you're going to have your first sixth grade math test of the year. It's going to be a chapter one test. We'll talk more about that on Friday. But I do want you to know um, all your late and missing work for chapter one has to be done when we take the test. So if you have corrections that you want to do, if you've got missing assignments up until this point, you need to get that done by next Tuesday, October 6. We're going to jump into the lesson. So today you're looking at equivalent ratios. Um, this is, is basically a series in the book of yes or no questions. Either the ratios are equivalent or they are not. The book looks at two ways that you can solve and determine whether ratios are equivalent. And remember, equivalent is just another way to say equal. And the first way is looking at making each ratio a unit rate. So the first way the book recommends to solve these is by making each ratio into a unit rate. So what this says is basically by comparing quantities as unit rates, which is the simplest form, you can determine if they are the same. So we look at something like this. They want to know if 10 prints for $2 and 30 prints for $6 are equivalent. And they are because they both reduce down to 5 prints for a dollar. So what this is saying is if you find the unit rate for 10 over 2, which you can divide both those by 2, that creates a unit rate of 5, 1. And when you look at 30 prints for $6, you change that into a unit rate. Again, a unit rate's over 1 by dividing both the top and the bottom by 6, and now you have 5 prints for a dollar. So yes, these are equivalent ratios. Let's look at another one. So 20 miles in 5 hours and 45 miles in 9 hours, are these equivalent ratios? That's the question, yes or no. So we're going to write each one as a fraction, then find its unit rate. 20 over 5 as a unit rate would be 4 over 1. Here, and we just divide it by 5. 45 over 9 reduces down to 5 over 1, so they are not equivalent. So the answer on that question in the book would just be no, they are not equivalent. All right, one more. Are these equivalent? Three t-shirts for $21, five t-shirts for $35. So we write each one as a fraction. $21 for three t-shirts equals $7 for one t-shirt. That's what it reduces down to. That is the unit rate. 35 over 5 reduces down to 7 over 1. That is the unit rate. Hopefully you can see by looking at this that these are indeed equivalent ratios. Um, they have the same unit rate. They are equivalent. So your answer would be yes. All right, the second way the book recommends solving these is by using equivalent fractions. Either way works. You can use unit rates or you can use equivalent fractions. So what the book is asking is yes or no, are these equivalent ratios? Three free throws made out of seven attempts, nine free throws made out of 14 attempts. So I set it up like a fraction. And what it wants you to do, what the book is saying is, if you look at this top number, 
3 times what is 9? Well, 3 times 3 is 9. If you multiply by the same thing on the bottom, is 3 times 7 14? No. So it's 3 times 2. You have to multiply different numbers, which means that this is not an equivalent ratio. I'll show you another example. Selena is comparing the cost of two packages of DVDs. A package of six DVDs costs $90, and a package of three DVDs costs $45. Are these rates equivalent? Explain your reasoning. So I set it up like a ratio or fraction. And is there a number that you can divide both the top and the bottom of 6 and 90 by to get 3 and 45? Is there a same number? Can you do the same operation to both 6 and 90 to get 3 and 45? Hopefully your answer is yes. You can divide them both by 2. So they are equivalent ratios. Because you can do one thing to both the top and the bottom of the fraction um, to get the other ratio, then yes, these are equivalent ratios. So your book assignment today, it is a book assignment today. It's page 63 and 65 in your book. There will be an answer key attached. As always, please put your answers on the answer key. And I want to give you a hint. All of these are yes or no questions. And that's all you need to write on the answer key is yes, meaning yes, they're the same, they're equivalent ratios, or no, they are not equivalent ratios. So your answer key should be pretty easy to fill out. Again, it's yes or no, and if you're not sure, you got a 50-50 chance on this one. But really, if you're not sure, as always, feel free to email me. Um, I'll see you at the meet. You can get help there. Um, but as always, reach out, ask for help. I hope you guys have a great rest of your day. Thanks for watching this video.